Welcome to the third webinar of the SISTAN-C webinar series. My name is Shanil Wickramasinghe, and I'm the US POC specialist for Gentian Diagnostics. In this edition of the Gentian webinar series, I'll be answering a few questions regarding the SISTAN-C assay that my colleagues and I often encounter during exhibitions, conferences, and client meetings. We begin with perhaps the most important question. What is Cystatin-C? Cystatin-C is a non-glycosylated polypeptide of a 120 amino acids that's encoded by the CTS3 gene, a gene that is constitutively expressed in all nucleated cells of the body. The low molecular weight and negative charge of Cystatin-C enables it to be freely filtered by the glomerulus without significant peritubular uptake. And coupled with the fact that more than 99% of cystatin C undergoes lysosomal degradation within cells of the proximal tubule, it's easy to see why this protein has been extensively researched over the past 40 years as an endogenous marker for estimating glomerular filtration rate, or GFR. To help illustrate the clinical value of cystatin C relative to the current standard of care, we now move on to another frequently asked question, which is, why measure Cystancy in addition to creatinine? The current mainstay for assessing renal function, creatinine, is a byproduct of muscle metabolism. As a result, individuals with different muscle mass, but a similar kidney function, will have different serum concentrations of creatinine and therefore receive different creatinine-based GFR estimates. By contrast, cystatin C is ubiquitously expressed throughout the body, and individuals with similar kidney function can be expected to have similar serum concentrations of cystatin C. One clear advantage, then, of using cystatin C and creatinine together is that the resulting GFR estimate would be less susceptible to factors that typically affect an individual's muscle mass, such as age, diet, gender, and level of physical activity. Another benefit of using Cystancy as a marker of renal function is that it allows for diagnosis of CKD in its earlier stages. Whereas serum creatinine concentrations are unresponsive to changes in GFR between 40 and 70 milliliters a minute, a range referred to in literature as the creatinine blind area, Cystancy concentrations in blood correlate well with GFR changes within the same range. In fact, it has been suggested that Cystancy may define a preclinical period of reduced kidney function that precedes a conventional creatinine-based diagnosis of CKD by as much as one to two decades. With this in mind, we now move on to another important question pertaining to the utility of Cystancy, which is which patient populations would benefit from supplemental Cystancy testing? Patients who are likely to receive inaccurate assessments of renal function based on creatinine values alone stand to benefit the most from supplemental cystatin C testing. For this reason, cystatin C is considered the ideal endogenous marker for estimating GFR in elderly and pediatric patients whose muscle mass vary considerably. The susceptibility of creatinine to changes in body habitus also suggests that confirmatory cystatin C testing could be warranted in athletes, amputees, military personnel, patients with spinal cord injuries, and those with conditions linked to malnutrition. The advantages of cystancy as a marker for kidney function also make it suitable for use in situations that are outside the purview of most nephrologists and primary care physicians. For instance, one hospital in Germany noted annualized savings in excess of 100,000 euros by optimizing chemotherapeutic drug doses through the co-reporting of creatinine and cystatin C-based GFRs. Their findings support a similar assertion made by Barreto and colleagues that drug-specific dosing protocols based on cystatin C would be beneficial to patients who are prescribed medications that are either renally eliminated or are nephrotoxic. 
in discussing the benefits of supplemental cysan C testing. Another frequently asked question that my colleagues and I often encounter is whether the clinical use of cysan C can address any health disparities. To answer this, it's important to note that chronic kidney disease is a growing public health issue with an estimated prevalence of 15% among American adults. The high cost of treating end-stage renal disease suggests that slowing CKD progression and developing targeted approaches to disease management should be a priority for health systems. Sustain C could ensure that these priorities are met by enabling an unbiased assessment of renal function, which is really central to the diagnosis and management of kidney disease. In fact, guidelines published by the Kidney Disease Improving Global Outcomes Initiative, or KDGO, and the UK's National Institute of Health and Care Excellence, NICE, actually suggests that cystan C could be used to curb overdiagnosis of CKD. According to these guidelines, physicians are urged to consider using cystan C based EGFR at initial diagnosis to either confirm or rule out CKD in patients with a creatinine based EGFR between 45 and 59 milliliters a minute and an albumin to creatinine ratio greater than 30 milligrams per gram. Incorporating cystan C into CKD patient care may also help reduce racial disparities in kidney disease outcomes by allowing for an assessment of renal function which is independent of a patient's muscle mass. The unfortunate reality faced by African Americans who are diagnosed with chronic kidney disease is that they are three times as likely as their Caucasian counterparts to develop end-stage renal disease. And the bias inherent in equations used to estimate kidney function solely based on creatinine is a significant contributor to this public health issue. The CKD epi equation, which is regarded as the best overall index for kidney function, accounts for the higher EGFR observed in African American patients across 10 studies with a 15.9% increase in EGFR over that of individuals belonging to other races. For a patient with below average muscle mass, such an increase could delay diagnosis of CKD and interventions against progression into end-stage renal disease. In later stages of the disease, a 15.9% increase could also mean that an African-American patient would become eligible for dialysis or a kidney transplant much later than a Caucasian patient with the same prognosis. Incorporating sustancy into CKD care regimens could therefore help alleviate racial disparities in kidney disease outcomes by allowing for an assessment of renal function that is independent of a patient's race. With that, we now move on to a question that pertains specifically to Gentian's turbidimetric sustain C assay, which is why use avian antibodies? Human anti-animal antibodies or human anti-murine antibodies and rheumatoid factor are a major source of interference in mammalian IgG antibody-based immunoassays. The use of chicken antibodies in Gentian's turbidimetric assays minimizes this interference and thus the likelihood of false positive results because IgY antibodies do not react with human antimurine antibodies, rheumatoid factor, or components of the human com complement system. The evolutionary difference between chickens and mammals has also been linked to signal amplification as chicken IgY antibodies react with more epitopes on mammalian antigens. For these reasons, Gentian has used avian antibodies in the cystan C amino assay since the development began in 2002. Our deep expertise in avian antibody production helps us create highly scalable solutions for the majority of diagnostic targets within the current portfolio. So this begs the question, what other advantages are there to Gentian cystan C amino assay? To start, the Gentian assay has been both CE marked and FDA 510K cleared as of 2008. It has also been standardized against the human serum certified reference material for cystan C, 
which was developed by the International Federation of Clinical Chemistry and Laboratory Medicine. Perhaps the most important feature of this particle-enhanced turbidimetric immunoassay is the fact that it is platform agnostic. That is, it can be used in a wide range of clinical chemistry analyzers, which include Beckman, Abbott, Roche, Siemens, and orthoclinical diagnostics instruments, among many others. The random access workflow capabilities of most automated platforms also means that samples can be measured successively as they arrive at the facility, often with lead times as low as 10 minutes. We now conclude this webinar with one final question that will hopefully summarize the most salient points of this presentation. This question is, why measure sustain C? Sustain C is produced at a steady rate in the body, is freely filtered by the glomerulus, and is almost completely degraded within the proximal tubule. As a consequence, serum concentrations of sustain C are not affected by muscle mass, and the equations used to estimate GFR do not involve a race adjustment. This allows for a near real-time assessment of kidney function, particularly within the creatinine blind area, where serum creatinine concentrations are unresponsive to changes in GFR. The relative advantages of using sustancy as a marker for kidney function may even extend beyond the scope of nephrology, where it could be used to improve drug dosing protocols and reduce health disparities. References to the information presented in the course of this webinar are provided below. For more information about Sustan C and the Gentian Sustan C amino assay, please contact us at marketing at gentian.com. Thank you.